In previous lessons, we've mentioned the virtual dome several times. Let's dive a little deeper into the virtual dome. What exactly the virtual dome is, and why React uses it instead of directly working with the real dome. There's a common misconception online that says the virtual DOM is primarily used to improve the performance of JavaScript's manipulation of the DOM tree. But is that really true? This lesson provides a simple introduction to the virtual DOM. We won't delve into the underlying principles of React's fiber architecture or the diffing algorithm. These more advanced topics can be revisited after mastering the basics of React. So, what is the virtual DOM? As we all know, a browser's rendered interface is made up of various types of element nodes. These nodes form the document object model, aka DOM, which exists outside of JavaScript but exposes element attributes via DOM objects. These objects collectively form the DOM tree, rendering the entire document. The virtual DOM, in contrast, isn't a real DOM. Instead, it describes the features of the DOM in the form of JavaScript objects. Let's verify this with code. In the code from our previous lesson, the element here is a virtual DOM. Let's rename it as VDOM, which stands for the virtual DOM. By using console log, we can examine what it really is. Let's use live server to open it. And in browser's console, it will show that the virtual DOM's prototype is of the object type. This indicates that it inherits properties and methods from JavaScript's generic object. To further verify, we can use console log type of VDOM to check its type. See, it's object. Or we can ask the browser if it's an instance of object, just using console log vdom instance of object. It's true. So we now know that there's really nothing mysterious about it. The virtual DOM is just a regular JavaScript object. What about the real DOM? Let's create a real DOM element using JavaScript. const addom equals create element div. Using console log, we can print the real DOM element and compare it with the virtual DOM. But if output the real DOM using the browser's console, it will display in a tag-like format. You can't really see its attributes, so we can use a tool called debugger. I'll add a debugger statement below the code. This will pause the execution at that point. When the mouse hovers over the R DOM, we can see there are numerous properties. So many lines here. Unlike the virtual DOM, which is lightweight and has minimal attributes with just several lines, right? So the virtual DOM is actually just a JavaScript object, which describes the structure and the properties of a real DOM element in a lightweight format. Then why use the virtual DOM? To understand this, let's look at how React renders a page. Initially, React creates some data and generates a virtual DOM in memory based on it. This virtual DOM is then processed to generate the real DOM, 
which is rendered on the page. Then data changes. React regenerates the entire virtual DOM and compares it to the previous one to identify the changes. It then updates only the necessary parts of the real DOM. In contrast, if a traditional JavaScript can directly manipulate the real DOM when data changes, then this will be more efficient, as it avoids the extra steps of a virtual DOM creation and comparison. So why does React use the inefficient approach? There are two main reasons why React had to adopt this approach. The first reason is that React's core design philosophy is to map data to the interface. When data changes, they need to correctly render the interface. This leads to a problem. How do data and the interface correspond? This is very complex, because a single piece of data can be used in multiple elements. And on the other hand, an element can use multiple pieces of data, creating extremely complex relationships. This complexity can be seen from the numerous attributes in the real DOM that we just debugged. As a general purpose library, React is difficult to predict how data and the interface will correspond. Therefore, it takes a rather simple and straightforward approach. That is, whenever data changes, the interface is completely re-rendered, without worrying about which part of the interface is affected. But this approach can be excessive. For example, if only a small piece of data changes, React doesn't know which specific part of the interface should be updated. So it just re-renders the entire interface. If we use this approach, the cost of manipulating the real DOM becomes very expensive, because all the add unchanged elements need to be completely re-rendered. So, to reduce the cost of manipulating the real DOM, React introduces the virtual DOM. When the data changes, since React doesn't know which part of the interface to update, it doesn't re-render the real DOM completely. Instead, it creates a full virtual DOM in memory, which is just an object. It's much simpler and then compares it with the previous virtual DOM to find the differences and modify the corresponding real DOM. Obviously, comparing two objects consumes far fewer resources than directly re-rendering and rebuilding all the elements. So, it's a roundabout way. But it's a necessary measure, because it's difficult to directly map data to the final interface. In other words, we all hope that the browser can directly locate the real DOM based on changes in the data. But because of the complexity of the real DOM, it's difficult to achieve this directly. Therefore, a virtual DOM step is introduced in between to calculate in memory which part has changed, and then accurately locate the real DOM. That's one reason. The second reason is abstraction. When designing React, they didn't envision it as a page-level application framework, but rather as a UI library. And what is a UI? It's a user interface, right? Which can be a web page, a mobile app, or a desktop application. As we know, the differences between platforms are significant. When we talk about the DOM, we usually mean a web page application. But what about mobile apps or desktop applications? 
Where is the DOM in those cases? To eliminate platform differences, React abstracted a UI expression method using a plain object to represent the UI interface, and then generated the real interface for each platform accordingly. This created an abstraction layer. So, the virtual DOM exists primarily for these two reasons. The content of this lesson may be a bit obscure, so feel free to review the notes and take some time to digest and understand it. In next lesson, we will back to JSX. See you soon.